Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Adam Smythe, part two. He'll give a reflection and much more. Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Adam Smythe, campus ministry and theology teacher at St. Agnes Academy in Houston, Texas. He's also the president of the Houston Arrows Rugby Club. And tonight he's going to be talking to us about forming Christian virtues in the sport of rugby. And this is the second part of the show we did with Adam. And tonight we're going to hit, I think, some of the themes of brotherhood yes. and um, the contributions we all have to bring to a community. It's a good show. So now we're going to a reflection with Adam Smythe. One of the greatest privileges I have in being the president of the Arrows is I've gotten to see a lot of men come through the club, uh, men who have stuck around, men who haven't, but been able to witness really how transformative Christian brotherhood can be and the brotherhood on the rugby pitch, but also off the rugby pitch. Um, we've had men come into our club from some really dark places. We've had men who were um, kind of coming back to life after incarceration, who through finding the club and finding support and love and brotherhood and a purpose, um, both spiritually and physically and putting their bodies on the line to play rugby, it's actually led to a greater joy, um, led to an increase in abundance of love in their family life. That's led them to um, just be better men, better husbands, better fathers, um, but also better Christians and grow in relationship with the Lord. But we've also had men who have come into the club um, in some really dark places. Um, as, as men, especially, I think when we feel like we're alone, when we're isolated, when we don't have love and we don't have people around us to help us know how valued we are, it can be a really big struggle to see that value in ourselves. And through the arrows and through the relationships and the friendships that we form, through having a common purpose to dedicate so much work and physical intensity, mental intensity and growth, it's really allowed um, some players and some of our men to get to a point of recognizing that life is worth living, that they're valuable, and that um, as men, as brothers and husbands and fathers, they are essential, they're loved, and they've come to really believe that and really internalize that. Well, Adam, welcome back to yeah. Life on the Rock. And this yeah. is actually a second episode uh, that we're doing with you. And um, you're a uh, campus ministry. Uh, you do campus ministry, and you're also a teacher of theology at yeah. St. Agnes Academy in Houston, Texas. But you're also the president of the Arrows Rugby Football League yeah. in Houston as yeah. well. And we've been talking about the formation mm -hmm. of, uh, of the league and, uh, and its involvement with forming young Christian men in the sport of virtue or in, uh, in rugby to really go out and live a Christian life. Mm -hmm. um, now, what are some of the themes that you like to uh, approach in their formation? Yeah, we typically throughout the year, we'll do kind of like three different almost formation sessions that will go. Um, so in the fall, kind of as the season is kind of getting underway, that's mm -hmm. where we tend to do um, a little bit more of, of like the intellectual formation, usually some sort of like scripture study. Um, and we've hit on a, a number of different themes. We've looked at prayer. We've looked at kind of tapping into maybe the season of Advent and just finding ways to help men, whether they're you know, Catholics who go to mass every Sunday, or if they're people who um, are kind of far from the Lord, yeah. finding ways to just kind of get them involved and um, be able to, to look at that. And then we'll usually do more witness-based things in the spring. So men okay. will have a chance, we call it Arrow's Tales. So men will have a chance to just share their story of coming to know the Lord or kind of their journey through life, um, which we found is just a great way, again, for, for those men who are maybe more on the margins or are less involved with their faith and yeah. maybe distant from the Lord, it's, it's easier to just kind of hear that witness and be able to ask questions and really engage in that way. Uh, and then in the summertime, we usually look at things maybe more philosophical or some special topics. Um, fatherhood has been something that comes up mm. um, or just like the life of virtue as a man. So we did a whole series with um, Bishop Olmsted's Into the Breach um, okay. uh, about a year and a half ago or two years ago, where we just invited men to talk a little bit about what it means to be a man and what it means to be a father because we have a number of guys who are part of the club who are husbands and fathers. Yeah, and you were telling me, I was surprised because whenever I was thinking about this league, I thought it would be probably more like single men mm -hmm. 
uh, maybe in their 20s, but you were telling me there's actually, the majority are actually married. Yeah. So I thought that was actually very interesting. What's what's kind of the, maybe the attraction there? Do you know? That's a good, yeah, I think for men, it's it's a good way to find other men and have that camaraderie, that yeah. brotherhood. Um, so I think a lot of guys who come uh, to us who are married and, uh, you know, great fathers, great husbands, brothers, I think there is just something about kind of the, the time with, with other men, you know, time mm-hmm. with the boys and um, to do something that is big and, and strong and masculine, like playing rugby, I think yeah. is obviously a big attraction. But for a lot of us too, I think we also recognize that it's also strong and masculine to yeah. love the Lord and pray with one another and try to grow so that we can go home to be better husbands and, and fathers and be better role models for our families and for our children and for our, our wives. So I think it's really that, that virtue piece is what yeah. I think really attracts men who just want to be better. Yeah. And what's been the response of kind of the men towards the, you were talking about like leading in scripture and prayer and all that. And you know, learning about Advent, what's been kind of the response by maybe those who are Catholic that are, you know, maybe rediscovering their faith or somebody who's not Catholic or maybe not even Christian? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had, we've had some guys, as you mentioned, kind of rediscover. And I think for some, maybe this, this kind of lapsed Christian life or Mm -hmm. lapsed Catholic life who there's been a little bit of a spark and a reignition. Um, I think the biggest response has been just a safe place for guys to ask questions. Yeah. Um, a mm-hmm. lot of men, I think, come in and whether it's yeah past wounds or misconceptions or how they've kind of grown up or how they were raised, uh, it's been a really healing thing for a number of guys in the club to just meet Christian guys, Catholic guys who are, are normal, you mm-hmm. know, who will sit down and maybe smoke a cigar, yeah. or, you know, like just men who, who want to be good men. Um, but we've had a lot of guys come into the club with really no background or, or like you said, no, no faith whatsoever. And I think there's been some openness and some growth. Um, we've had a couple guys discern seminary. We've had, um, one guy actually, um, I think he went through RCIA to get confirmed, but had kind of fallen away from his faith mm-hmm. and kind of credited the club as a, a great way for him wow. to kind of get back into his faith and come to know the Lord again. So, um, certainly we have some guys who don't really want to engage too much with all of that, but I think just the, whether you come to formation events or not to be involved week in, week out, you really just kind of learn by osmosis, yeah. you know, and, um, like I said, a, a safe place for guys to ask questions and, um, whether it's big questions or challenges that they're facing, it's, it's been a trusting, um, environment for, yeah. for men to learn. And I think to the league, it's in one way, it's like a ministry of evangelization, mm-hmm. Uh, for men to have that kind of response, um, for two to go to the seminary and one to go back to confirmation, that, that's yeah. a big step. And because um, I think a lot of times, you know, it's my, at least in my opinion, there's just a lot of craziness out in the world. There's a lot of confusion. But I think, too, that just having that openness to be able to, you know, just talk um, to your team or to have that support, mm-hmm. you know, and I think a lot of guys know that you know, whether you're discerning or seeking, you know, there, there's something that does bring uh, men together in sports. And I, I think there's a, a different kind of openness. Uh, and it, it might be something where you just relate <laughs> yeah. a lot of times. And um, so I think that's interesting uh, that, you know, men have that response. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, what about the philosophy? You were mentioning you do like kind of a course and the philosophy, what is that about? Yeah, we, I think just over the years, looking for different things to, to learn about. We have some guys who are really intellectual. Okay. Um, we have some men who, you know, converted to the faith or kind of came to know the Lord a little bit later on. Um, some of it was through marriage or some of it mm-hmm. was just through the course of life. And uh, so we have guys who just love to read and read and read. And mm-hmm. so um, I think a few of us just can be a little bit nerdy about it and <laughs> it just kind of grew and developed yeah. into something. So um, we did a whole summer. We looked at the five um, ways of Thomas Aquinas or the five proofs for God's existence, Whoa. where we kind of tap different guys in the club to do some research and to kind of lead a session. Um, we've looked at, yeah, other, other virtues with those cardinal virtues that we had a club member who um, was working on his doctorate in philosophy, like come and run. And, um, a couple years ago, we looked at uh, Carl Truman and the, his uh, book on like the rise and fall of the self, I think is what it's called. Um, but looking at just kind of modern life and modern culture and where do we see the Christian life in that? How do we respond? So um, that's been kind of a fun thing for us to do over the summer of a little bit more of the, the intellectual side, but yeah. um, gives us a chance yeah, to, to ask tough questions and um, try to yeah, understand where, how we're called to respond and how we're called to grow and, and live as men in the world today. So it's well, that's cool. interesting that men would actually 
and in a sport take up that task and want to pass that along i think that's yeah. a really interesting thing i never even thought about that in terms of mm -hmm. sports but we have to go to a break but whenever we come back let's get more into the formation sure Um, there's one of the things you said earlier, um, and it kind of tapped into preaching. And I thought mm -hmm. this was interesting because a lot of times in sports, uh, you hear the same message preached over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's a, a, a striking parallel to that in religion, that there are just certain truths or certain teachings that we kind of do have to hear constantly. Maybe not that we forget, but a lot of times it does have to be in one sense, just kind of drilled into us. And I think that was always kind of an interesting uh, perspective in football whenever I played, because there were certain elements that were preached on daily. Mm -hmm. And um, so what are, are there any things like in rugby that have to be mentioned on a daily basis? <laughs> uh, yes. And, uh, and our coach, uh, we love him, uh, has been very big from the when he started, I think four years ago or five seasons ago, um, we are very big on fundamentals. And yes. so just like, yeah, okay. when you came out for football practice, yeah. like we start with the exact same, like simple drills of simple passing and working on simple tackling and all of those fundamental things are so essential. Um, and it's just like any other sport, but especially with rugby, you know, when it's late in the game and you're exhausted and you're tired is that's when those, those fundamentals Everything start breaking down. And yeah, and that's, <laughs> yeah. And especially in rugby, it's like when you're, when you're tired, or you go into a tackle lazily, it's like that's so you can get hurt, so you can yeah. get injured, or you could hurt somebody else. So um, yeah, every every time we train, we do the exact same things at the start to just make sure that we have those fundamentals just drilled to a T so that when you're tired or distracted or um, when it gets hard, you know what you're doing yeah. and you know how to do it. And in one sense, it's got to be automatic yeah. all the time. And I heard this coach, I thought he always had a really good... Um, kind of quote, because he said, fatigue banks cowards of us all. Mm. And I thought he said, because what he was talking about is whenever you get tired, you start making mistakes, you stop caring, and the will to do what's right just goes out the door. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you see that a lot in sports, because there is a grind there, especially kind of at the end, but that's so true even in the spiritual life, mm -hmm. that you can be fine for a while, but then things start just kind of breaking down, you know, you kind of get tired of it all. Yeah. Uh, but to really go back to those fundamentals is so important because it's kind of something that you almost intuitively know you have to do. Yeah. And I, so I think even in the faith, just going back to the basics, just what are the basics? Yeah. You know, and have I strayed from that? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a constant, you know, reforming of the self, but even just knowing ourselves, how do you approach that of just the concept of knowing yourself in a sport like rugby? Hmm. I think on the formation side, we tend to have a pretty big focus just on those basics, right down the kerygma. Mm -hmm. um, and so every every year we know that we have guys who've been here, but we also have new players and people who haven't been there. So um, we do have a focus in that regard, just on what is the basic gospel message mm -hmm. and, and what is it that these men really need to hear time and again. Um, but I think the biggest piece has been, again, just that, that brotherhood, the family that's developed. Um, we've had guys who've gone through some really tough things and faced really big um, moments of adversity. And I think the more you spend time with men that you know are going to have your back and that are going to yeah. support you, I think the more you can begin to rely on those things that, that again, are kind of those basic things, yeah. like knowing that I'm valuable, knowing that I'm loved, knowing that I'm, I've got people who have my yeah. back. Um, it's a really important thing. And it's really important for us uh, guys from every walk of life and from all over the place who um, their authentic self is is what our club yeah. needs and that's what we want to have but i think having that that support and that love and that uh, that brotherhood that yeah. fraternity really allows us to to like you said know ourselves and to grow in that knowledge of self which then just i think helps us again grow in virtue and become better rugby players but also just better men yeah because i think just in sports in general it's like somebody may be good at running catching tackling 
Uh, but really being able to identify the gifts of the other, mm -hmm. you know, and what they kind of bring. And how does maybe your league or yourself kind of approach, you know, whenever you see somebody with a gift, mm -hmm. you know, how do, do you kind of bring that out or highlight that? Oh, yeah. Uh, on the rugby side, it's a huge thing, right? Um, one of the best tacklers I've ever met is a guy who is not big, right? Yeah. He's maybe 165, 170 yeah. pounds, yeah. Um, but he can run all day and he can tackle anybody. And so knowing that he is in the back uh, of our field playing fullback, like we know that if someone breaks through, like He'll chances are yeah. he's going to get him. Um, and that's a real skill to have. Yeah. I mean, open field tackling, none of that's easy. <laughs> no, no, and it's and it's good, but but he's not going to be the guy who's necessarily going to, you know, make break the big run or like, you know, bust through something. So, I think in rugby it's it's good just as as the sport goes to recognize gifts and talents or to know like I'm not going to be able to get there in time, but I trust that someone will get yeah. there or I know that in this moment like I'm the one that has to step up and um, I really need to push through and and be the one to do it. But I think for our club just you know, we're a younger club. We just finished our eighth season. Um, we're a smaller club. And so we've had to learn how to adapt and how to grow so that our, our club can be sustainable. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we have people, uh, board of directors who have just, again, different perspectives that help our club grow and different officers. Um, but as a completely volunteer, you know, run and, and no one's getting paid a salary, like we're just here to have a good time. We've learned how to really tap guys who have different gifts to help our club grow and to put yeah. them into positions of leadership and really empower them so that the club will continue um, to not just survive, but continue to grow and thrive. Yeah, that trust factor is big, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, just being able to rely on others. Um, I bet as the president, you feel that a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, just probably, that's probably a big weight, you know? Yeah, but I've got really great people in all of our other positions um, that make it really easy for me to, to focus on kind of the overall culture of the club. But um, we have guys who, yeah, really talented in a number of different ways that handle all of the things that I have no idea how to do. And we work together, you yeah. know, so that team aspect, that, that kind of brotherhood, familial aspect is the only reason that we're yeah. able to survive and grow. And I think too, just combining that brotherhood and even the humility hmm. that we are reliant on the other often. I mean, so in our spiritual lives or in sports or at work, mm -hmm. you know, we're just so dependent a lot of times on what other people are doing. And I think just cultivating that sense of responsibility and duty yeah. um, goes a long way in sports. Well, Adam, where can we actually find more information about uh, the Arrows and the Football League? Yeah, so um, our website, arrowsrugby.com, is a great way for you to kind of go and see. We've got uh, everything up there from schedules and, and match schedules and okay. kind of our history of the club. Um, but that's probably number one. And then uh, you can find us, I think, Arrows RFC on Facebook. We've got an Instagram, so we're on social media as well. But the website really is kind of the, the one-stop shop. Okay. Well, we've run out of time. But, Adam, thank you for being on Life yeah. on the Rock. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Well, Father Mark, one of the things uh, that was brought up during the interview was one thing that really surprised me was that a lot of married men, you know, are playing rugby. And I think there's something to be said about them uh, in the sense that, you know, a lot of men are looking for that brotherhood, that Christian brotherhood that's going to bring, I think, a positive influence mm -hmm. uh, in their life of how to grow in prayer, uh, spirituality, uh, becoming a better husband, a better father. Mm -hmm. And that's such a voice that we need. We need to be surrounded by, you know, those voices that really give us maybe the information or the encouragement uh, and or the direction that we need to really kind of carry out you know, our duties or just are walking with the Lord. Yeah, I love that part of the interview um, when the when he's talking about the guys getting together and then sharing themselves of their own spirit, mm -hmm. their own experience of maybe growing in fatherhood or their masculinity. I think that is so powerful. And I think I think men do that well. If you can get them together and share, mm -hmm. you know, they yeah. want to push the, the ball forward, yeah. you know, and they have they reflect on things. They like to come up with ideas and 
and you know just help the young the next guy you know mentor yeah. there's just something hardwired in men to mentor i think so i've seen that many times with guys getting together and the power of sharing your own personal experience on this topic whatever it could be theology or fatherhood mm -hmm. or service i think it's interesting you know they bring a spiritual formation and an intellectual formation yeah and just that apostle of going out and serving others i think yeah. you, you bring you combine all that and you have a very strong foundation and I think that's one of the benefits of, you know, really this ministry, not only that is it ordered, you know, to evangelizing Catholics and non-Catholics alike, but really also bringing just a religious and spiritual foundation to build upon. Right. You know, and the fact that you're learning the scriptures or praying or maybe studying the philosophy for the first time, uh, all that goes a long way. Uh, just in our growth and our faith with others and with the church. Um, but I think, too, we realize we're not doing it alone. Yeah, you know, and yeah. that's a big theme that we often talk about is that we're not alone in our walk yeah. in this life. And men need to get together. We need to have yeah. male friendships and things. And Adam's a Steubenville grad, so he's a witness to evangelization. Yeah. If you can get rugby players to do this, yeah. right, uh, to be civilized, to accept the faith, to live the faith, I say that jokingly. I had a great experience with my rugby team when I was chaplain, but it's great to bring the faith into whatever we do. It enriches it, mm -hmm. and especially like the brother part of it, I think. Uh, you form good friendships. Men oftentimes need that vehicle to come together, need something to put them together, and then that natural brotherhood right. grows. So we'll send you to that vineyard with a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. May He send His Holy Spirit and guide and direct you in your life. May God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. The sun will always shine, and in the heart of every storm, you'll always be the eye. No high, no death, the final breath can keep me from your love. Oh my God, you chose me, and forever show me. My life is part of your plan, my name is carved in your hands. You meet me right where I am, your love won't let me go. Here on your promise I stand You finish what you began You meet me right where I am Your love won't let me go Your love won't let me go Your love won't let me go You made the sun, the moon and sky In every galaxy in your arms said I'm the missing piece And now the author of the stars Lives inside my heart Oh my God, you chose me You chose me And forever show me My life is part of your plan My name is called in your hands You meet me right where I am Your love won't let me go Here on your promise I stand, I stand. You finish what you begin But I know who holds my future. I don't know what my future holds, but I know who holds my future. There's never a day or an hour a minute, oh, no. a time in my life when you haven't been in it. I don't know what my future holds, but I know you hold it. My life is part of your plan. My name is Carl.
to me And your love won't let me go 